Welcome to the Between Two Wheels podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny Roblock, and joining me today, very special guest, <laughs> my wife, my best friend, and my COVID-19 social <laughs> distancing partner. Mm-hmm. This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, where customer service actually matters. Today, we are talking again about women in motorcycling and with my wife Tracy being here with over a decade worth of riding I think she brings a very good point of view and she's the only spouse of the crew that actually listens to the podcast (laughs) so there's that so welcome back to the show Tracy thank you how are you fine although now I can't listen to the podcast and do the drinking game that's the only that's the only reason I listen to the podcast. Except for when I say now. <laughs> I know I can take a lot of drinks off of that one. <laughs> uh, also <laughs> in the studio are our four puppies. Uh, the reason for that is mom's in here, dad's in here, puppies must also be in here. So if you hear any random barks or anything like that, they are here in the studio with us. Just like that. It's like on cue or something. So let's, let's actually... You know, I I brag about you and your writing skills and everything a lot on the show. Let's actually get into your writing (laughs) background. So how long have you been writing? So uh, since 2007, I had to do the math. (laughs) I had to sit there and go, wait, when did I actually start writing? So 2007, yeah, that's when I got my um, motorcycle license, Mm -hmm. went to the class, almost got kicked out because you and all of my friends all showed up to support me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and y'all were very loud. And I had to uh, tell you guys to leave. <laughs> yeah. I'll never so ever get that. We rolled up. So this is in Plano, Texas. For those of you unfamiliar with that, it's a suburb of Dallas. Mm-hmm. And this was in a Garden Ridge. So today's name of the company is At Home. A big ass parking lot that they cordon off. And they do their writing skills challenges there. Mm-hmm. And we rolled up probably 10, 12 Oh, deep easily. <laughs> and all biker thugged out. We yeah. had we had our, our cuts on, you know, all bunch of big, burly, mean, Harley riding oh, yeah. badasses. Sure, right. Uh, every one of us were cheering I mean, for you and, I know, and but you smiling. Guys, you so. guys were further off. It was just that there was a lot of um, people in the class that, were nervous anyways there was a couple that shouldn't have been taking the class but we won't say that um you already said it it's already on the rec- on the tape damn it it's going yeah but i didn't mention any names um i don't even know who they are but uh any they got nervous and a couple of others were like why are there people watching us and so i had told you guys go leave go to talk cubana <laughs> wait for me there <laughs> but no that's when i got my license um and I've uh, been writing ever since, off and on, as much as I can, I guess. Yeah, so about 13 years. What got yeah. you into writing? Um, well, at the time, <laughs> now my ex-husband, um, he had a motorcycle. He got one Harley, actually at the Harley-Davidson shop, the, the Plano shop, or the, mm-hmm. well, Allen shop, Allen I guess. shop, yeah. And that's when we met Crazy Ed, mm-hmm. and he invited us to come out practice and stuff like that and I was riding on the back and it was not a pleasant experience (laughs) it was very uncomfortable but it was also just really nerve-wracking because my ex didn't really know exactly how to ride too Mm -hmm. well so he was kind of learning he was learning at the same time but I feel like being on the back was causing extra because I mean there's weight and there's movement and yeah. anyways I'll give him the benefit of the doubt <laughs> but it was very frustrating for me to ride and but whenever we got to the um like the bike practice that was in the parking lot mm-hmm. and there were so many people men and women and it was just so much fun and then a lot of the women that were riding on the bike on the back they all were like, we want our own bike. <laughs> sure. So they started riding on the front. And whenever they started riding on the front, I'm like, well, I'm not going to be the last girl to do this. <laughs> so uh, I was like, okay, well, I'm getting in on this. And so that's kind of what started that. And then once I got to ride my own motorcycle, then it was like, I'm never getting on the back again. <laughs> yeah. So let's let's talk about the comfort and being a passenger. Now, you have a type when it comes to <laughs> the men you choose. Okay, okay. You like large I, I people. like I like girthy men yeah 
So <laughs> would you say just based on the conversations you've had with other women that you mm-hmm, know and mm-hmm. you've and you've dealt with, mm-hmm. is that a common theme is the comfort, especially being a passenger? Yeah, I think if so. <laughs> I'm like trying not to make this vulgar, but it's just going to sound that way. You have a girl on the back or anybody on the back, uh, you, you seriously have to spread your legs to get around. Sure, it's like a gynecologist <laughs> visit every time you're getting <laughs> on the back. It feels like that. Yeah. So with that stretch and then um, the major bend in your knee mm-hmm. to be able to put your feet on the pegs and sitting in that position for a really long time, it's very uncomfortable. Mm. And I know a lot of the women that... Um, you know, would talk about how they love riding on the back and they don't really want to go to the front, that their biggest concern is, um, you know, having that space, you know, when um, you or like with Ken and Faith, you know, with Ken, uh, it's better for him to have a backrest yeah. because if he pushes too far back, he's pushing into Faith. Right. And that makes it uncomfortable for her as well. So, um, so I think that separation, I think a lot of women don't know that having a backrest on the man... <laughs> Is it saving them? <laughs> or, or you know, it's 2020. They may be riding on the back of their girlfriend I mean, or yeah, yeah. domestic partner, Absolutely. wife's bike. Too, yeah, I'm so. just using this as general. Yeah, general. Um, but I think that when, I think one of the big things, like if men, sorry, if men were, I'm getting used to using a microphone. Um, and I know I'm loud, so I worry <laughs> that I'm yelling. I can fix that in post. Okay. But I know that when there's a lot of women on the back, if it's when they first get on, when a, when, a, when you were to buy a bike, let's mm-hmm. just use us. If you go buy a bike and it has a back seat, in essence, right. <laughs> air quotes, and I get on the back, if it's not comfortable for me and I've never I've never ridden my own and this is the first time I'm really getting on the back and I sit on it and it's not comfortable, that is going to ruin the whole riding experience for me and I don't ever want to get back on. So I feel like one of the big things kind of like going into another line of questioning, if you will, but I think one of the big things if, if, if a couple is going in, uh, you know, we'll just say man and woman couple just to make it easier, but it could be anybody. No judgment. <laughs> um, but if a couple goes in knowing that they're going to buy a motorcycle, that one's going to ride and one's going to be a passenger, and uh, they go on in this together, then I think they need to make as much of a, of a good decision to buy the right size bike um, that fits both of them and spend a little extra. I mean, you always want to spend extra and buy those, you know, buy the exhaust and <laughs> buy handlebars, but really upgrade that back seat a little bit. And I think if you have a more comfortable ride, um, I mean, I see so many people that have like the big bikes and like the back seat has the speakers. And I mean, you could pretty much fall asleep in the back. <laughs> and it's like beautiful. It's perfect. I would love to sit on the back of that. I don't have any problem with that because it's really comfortable. And I think that if you're going to be a passenger and you're going in with this, that, um, I think that if you make it just as comfortable for your passenger Mm -hmm. and the two of you can start off right, that you're both going to be comfortable. You're both going to have fun together. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, he or she, whoever's riding the passenger, I mean, they're literally putting their lives in your hands. Right. (laughs) So they need to feel like they're secure and you know what you're doing. And of course we all have backseat drivers. (laughs) Yep. And so I know I'm terrible at it. And that's why I don't ride on the back with you (laughs) uh, because I will tell you, what are you doing? Turn right. Um, Or (laughs) Or you're going too fast. Or stop that. Or stop that. Um, But uh, I think, yeah, going from the very beginning as far as, like, comfort and everything, um, if both rider and passenger are completely comfortable, then they will have a better experience right from the very beginning. Now, you've heard us, the guys, talking about this on the show multiple times. Um, Do you agree with our perspective that pretty much every Harley Davidson seat is complete garbage (laughs) and needs... and, and (laughs) <laughs> and really looking at this again from the days, the short days that you were a passenger. Mm-hmm. I mean, is this something that Harley needs to really start focusing in on? At least maybe not on the rider's side, but more on the passenger side? I mean, I think that would really help. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like, you know, when somebody goes and buys a motorcycle, it's usually the rider. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times it may be like 
it's the joke, you know, hey, your wife said you could buy a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you go and you buy a motorcycle and then you try to convince her to get on. Um, I feel like if if they would give you the option, or I don't really know how they would do it because, you know, they're trying to sell to the driver, right, or the rider. So they're trying to sell to him they or her, and they want to make sure that that seat is comfortable for that person. They don't care so much about a passenger. Sure. So, so let's let's look at folks that we know mm -hmm. that will always be a two-up duo, mm -hmm. and that's, you know, TJ and Steph. Yeah. The ornery one and the ornery squad. And I probably fucked up the way it said, fuck y'all, I'm from Texas, damn it. <laughs> But uh, they'll, they'll be okay. But she will never ride the motorcycle herself. Yeah. And I feel that Harley Davidson's not taking into account the yeah. the women or the passengers who want to only be a passenger. Yeah. yeah. And I know, out of in Steph's situation, it's not a want. It's she she cannot ride, and it's a medical thing. Sure. But I mean, here's the thing. There's so many women that I know that or used to know, I guess, whenever we were with big Harley groups that they love riding on the back. I yeah. remember when I did ride on the back, I did take advantage of it because as a passenger, I see more. Um, I can see a car, I can see something else happening, but I can also sit there and, and enjoy the scenery yeah. and take pictures. And I mean, I don't remember how many thousands of pictures I have taken being a, a passenger just of different motorcycles and getting all these really cool shots. I mean, nowadays, that was back then, but nowadays we have GoPros, but. Um, so well, they, they had GoPros shit. back then okay, too. Okay, but nobody ever used but them. But they were shitty. Yeah, nobody ever used them. But um, I mean, so I feel like, you know, being a passenger, you do have a little bit more freedom. I mean, I, I hear a lot about people literally taking a nap <laughs> back well, there. Well, you passed out I on me a out. couple of times uh, <laughs> on our trip from Cincinnati to back no, to Dallas. No, did I? Yeah, no, I your think I just... helmet crashed into the back of my head a few times. <laughs> I'm sure. I think that was just the weight of all the rain. And then I think you fell asleep when we had to do our New Mexico run to go pick up your bike. No, I was just trying to... Well... Okay, maybe I took cat naps. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're, Anyways. we're digressing yeah. here. Um, what bikes have you owned? Okay, so I had to write this down because I couldn't remember. <laughs> it's on the TV if you need yes, to see. Yes, I know. It. I'm okay. trying not to look. I'm trying to look at you. Um, okay, so let's see. I started, after I took the class, um, a friend let me borrow her bike. Um, it wasn't, you know, she wasn't using it. It was like the training bike. It went, kind of went around the... Everybody wrote it. Actually, it went around to pretty much all the women yeah, in our group. Everybody wrote it. Um, it was, what did we say? It was a Suzuki Boulevard. Yeah. And I think maybe around 2003, 2005 year. I don't know. It doesn't yeah. matter. It was a silver bike. That's all I remember. Yeah. So you started out on a cruiser. <laughs> on a cruiser, yes. So people who don't know, the Suzuki Boulevard is, in essence, like the mix between a soft tail and a Dyna. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, bigger tank, a little bit heavier motorcycle. But. but still a very small bike compared to all the people that we were riding with. Yeah. And I I mean, that bike definitely taught me what a friction zone was. Let me tell you how many times we would get to a stop sign and I would stall the bike and start it back up. I got so good at starting or stalling and starting that nobody even knew that it happened. <laughs> 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 but because uh, it was very, very sensitive. Um, so what it, was your first motorcycle that was yours? My first motorcycle that was mine is my beloved Bob. Um, it was a street Bob. It was a 2009, um, all black. Um, we did change out the handlebars and put taller handlebars, although it came with tall handlebars. So Actually, we didn't touch the bars on your yes, street Bob. Did. Uh -uh. On the Heritage, we did. We left your bars You don't alone. know on the Bob. That yeah. was way early in the day. Uh, you you stick with the you stay with the stock black uh, mini maybe, apes. I, maybe I did. I don't remember. I thought we got big ones, but anyway, we have pictures. Shut up. We got we definitely <laughs> um, upgraded the exhaust. I had so much fun on that bike. Oh, I love that bike. Um, I did like the rodeo, and for people that don't know, um, if you go to like rallies or something, they'll do um, like obstacle courses or games or things like that, and. Man, when I got comfortable with that bike, because you felt like you were in it. Yeah. <laughs> it's so great. And, um, but yeah, you could, I mean, I tipped it over so many times just trying to make a tight turn and just get off, put it back up. No big deal. Yeah. <laughs> it was such an easy bike to ride. But um, that was my baby. I loved him very much. Rest his soul. Um, 
<laughs> and then I guess after that was the Heritage. Mm-hmm. What was that? Uh, 2012. 2012. Thank you. And it was white. It was called Casper. That was his name. Um, I got to say the Heritage, you know, I know a lot of girls that rode a Heritage, but it was not as comfortable as I hoped it would be. Um, I guess because going from the Street Bob, which you felt like you were in it, that the Heritage felt like it felt like you were sitting on top of it. Mm-hmm. And it had a very, like, low center of gravity. And so I didn't feel comfortable tilting it as much as I did, like, my street bob. I just felt like I was going to fall over. Um, so it did kind of get a little annoying after a while, but I didn't ride it very much. <laughs> Poor baby. Um, and then after that was, um, that's when we moved to North Carolina. North Carolina. And yep. we had some good riding out there. Shit, yeah. So I needed to change the bike. <laughs> I think you talked me into it, I'm pretty sure. Um, And that was a road king. That Mm -hmm. was the very first time. And what was funny is, just as a side note, so my ex-husband had a road king. Mm -hmm. And he did put bigger handlebars on it, taller handlebars, but really that was all that he did. He didn't take an exhaust and handlebars. Yeah, but as far as like overall feel of what it was, it was just, I mean, he changed the seat, but not like crazy. It was just a normal but I remember sitting on that trying to to ride it way back in the day before I even got on the boulevard. Mm-hmm. And it felt like this huge monster bike. Sure. I, I was like, there's no way I can ride this. There's no way. And then I remember getting the Road King and sitting on that going, this isn't that big. What was my problem back in the day? <laughs> I don't even know what it was. And I feel like just kind of as a side note for, you know, some women and even for some men, I mean, don't feel like you – you know, yes, the Road King feels big when you first get on it, but it's so comfortable and it's it's such a nice bike. And, you know, once you get on it and get used to it, then it's like so easy. You don't have to start with a teeny tiny baby bike. So let's let's talk about that a little bit. Okay. You know, we, you and I have a friend who is like four foot ten, <laughs> weighs maybe seventy five pounds, soaking wet. And she cruised, or at least back in the day, she was mm-hmm. cruising on a street glide. Yeah. And that was lowered. E- <laughs> sure. <laughs> you actually get it did, on it. It did have um, air ride suspension mm-hmm. and it was lowered on top of that as well. But it, she was used multiple times to show that someone who is tiny mm-hmm. can lift mm-hmm. a bagger. Oh, yeah. And so they would put carpet down and lay over her bike as for demonstration purposes and she'd go and pick it up like it was nothing yeah so it really comes down to what you yourself Mm -hmm. can be comfortable on don't let the size scare you away so but i mean i would say that if i'd have gotten a road king before the street bob i think things would have been a little bit differently i probably wouldn't have done the rodeos like i did because that street bob just felt so much more comfortable right right so and i had looked at when i got the street bob i had also looked at fat boy and um i forget there was another motorcycle that i was looking at it was like a soft tail of some sort well that was pre jrb so (laughs) it was hawk's bike remember that Okay, so he had a super glide. Yeah, that's a it. Dyna super glide. Yeah, because I felt like I wanted to deck it out and call it something like ABBA or, you know, something 70s. So, okay. Anyway, um, but yeah, the street bar was just every single time I'd go in and sit on it, it was like, this is my bike. This yeah. This is my bike. Because you were also looking at the switchback as well. Yeah, but that was later. Okay, that was after Bob? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, it was a good bike. And then, of course, I bought it in all black and then it came out in red and blue. And yeah. I was like, Damn it, because <laughs> I'd have got it in blue, <laughs> for yeah. sure. Anyways, um, okay, so let's see, where was I? Okay, so Casper, and then the Road King, of course, his name was Elvis. Yep, And the then the King. And um, <laughs> the King had battery issues, <laughs> as <Well>. one does. <laughs> so Shut up. <laughs> it's uh, not operator error. I don't care what you say. Elvis, I think, only had like 5,000 miles when we traded it in. Yeah, I know. It was so bad. I felt so terrible. But yeah, we go into the dealership to uh, fix the battery. <laughs> we leave with another bike. Two new bikes. <laughs> Two new bikes. Yeah. And that became the Road King Special, and his name is Edris. Yeah. Oh, because he's so sexy. <laughs> Anyways, Edris is a good baby. Um <laughs> I love him so much. I still, I'm still trying to figure out um, 
the comfort though with the seat mm -hmm. and the because you've had a few seats on there now yeah just haven't found the right one yet i really want a big fat cop seat you know what i mean yeah <laughs> i think that's what i'm going to end up going with and i think i want to pull the handlebars back a little bit more but anyway shut up i know another set of handlebars <laughs> okay so we talked about your bikes yeah what would you say are kind of your top important aspects of riding what what do you get out of riding well um confidence really i think that's the biggest thing is i am i can do this i can do this so just as good as anybody else this is fine let's let's have an example of how motorcycle riding has built your confidence okay or maybe a story or something to kind of because <laughs> when you say confidence that okay. that means a lot to a lot of different people okay so what you're wanting me to tell is this one story i'm I going off of what you have i know i know i forgot and then i thought i was like oh yeah i did write that down didn't i um but yeah so uh let's talk about that so back in the day when i was first learning how to ride and first riding with a big group which i love by the way i love riding with a group of people i'm I'm okay riding by myself if I have to, like if I'm doing an iron butt, but mm -hmm. I love riding with a group of people. Okay, so let me just like say that. Um, as I was riding with a group of people, um, it was difficult because I was the newest one. And so usually the newest or least experienced person when you ride in a group is like the number two position. Mm -hmm. And of course my ex was number one because he, <laughs> anyways. Um, so he was in that position and he was just very overprotective, but it wasn't just him. It was like everybody in the group was very overprotective. And um, it was very stressful to ride because it was like I'm messing up all the time and everyone's pointing it out. And, um, and I really wasn't, it was just, I was stressed because people were judging me all the time and so I would make mistakes. It's sort of like whenever you're typing and people are looking at you and you can't type worth nothing. So So it was more of a pressure. It thing. was very pressured. And and I just couldn't do anything right. And then um so what happened was <laughs> always the best stories. Uh, you know. Uh is we went on a dinner ride, of course, with a big group of people, um, all of our Harley friends and went on a Friday night. And um, I rode home with you and our other friend, his name is Haas, and, or Scott. Um, and we rode home together, and the two of you ride very similarly. Yeah. Yeah, I said that word right. Um, and uh, you're not, yes, you are aggressive, but you're also very, ride your own ride. It's yeah. fine. Don't worry about it. We're good. Um, and I had never really experienced that type of feeling before. Mm-hmm. And so whenever um, we were riding home, I mean, it was late. It, you know, it wasn't like there was a lot of traffic. It wasn't a big deal. And you guys, um, you were in front and Haas was in the back. And y'all were kind of like protecting me, but not really. We were just riding together. Yeah. And um, we just kept going faster and faster and faster. And I was able to just like gun it if I wanted to and do what, really whatever I wanted to do. You guys didn't judge me. You didn't say anything about it. And I just had so much fun. It was just so freeing. And when we get to, you know, we were on a highway, so of course we could go faster. Um, but then whenever we exited the highway and got to the stoplight, oh my God, I probably had so many bugs in my teeth from smiling. You had, you <laughs> did have the biggest <laughs> shitty so and grin. Good. So and to kind of put a little bit of context here, um, we rode with the Panther Creek Hog Chapter. Mm -hmm. And at that time, Haas and I were both road captains. So we had... Uh, it wasn't Bluetooth. It was actually CB comms. Mm -hmm. And we, Haas and I, we, we were roommates. Um, mm -hmm. And we rode together all the time. Yeah. And, and you knew each other's body language and signals. Yeah. And I mean, we would ride handlebar to handlebar oh, yeah. on, you know, two-lane <laughs> yeah, country roads. Two-lane country windy roads. Yeah. And, but we knew each other's yeah. skill level and capability. Yeah. So... But with us both being road captains, half the time I didn't have to tell him mm -hmm. I need a lane. But we did ride in that type of formation where, you know, there's only three of us. We're going to protect a lane. And we we rode it like we would ride a normal group ride. Yeah. And then we try to ride that way all the time if there's more than just the two of us. Yeah. Um, I feel like you guys took it easy on me to begin with. 
And then it was kind of like, well, just let her do whatever she wants to do. <laughs> that's what I kind of felt like. And maybe you did, maybe you didn't, but that's yeah. what it felt like to me. And that was the weekend around when you and your husband were yeah, separated. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> so there's so that. it was kind of a celebratory... Kind of. You know, get your freedom back. I think, yeah, I think that was a lot. And I feel like... I feel like, and I don't want to generalize, but I feel like that's what I'm doing because you know we're talking about the differences between men and women sometimes. But um, I feel like a lot of women, when they do decide they want to go on the front, it's kind of like there's so many things to think about, anyways. But you know, it's the you know their husband wants to be protective of them. They want to make sure they're okay. They don't want to see them get hurt, and I can understand that. But I think spouses make the most <laughs> terrible teachers. Yeah, I agree. Especially with something that. But it's hard because whenever I see you ride like a crazy person, which I think you're riding like a crazy person, you're not. But and I'm like, I can't watch. I can't. When you take your hands off the handlebars, that is the worst thing you do to me. That's and cruise it's like, control. That's no, what it's there for. No, because what if there's a rock? What if there's a kid? What if there, oh, my God. The the what ifs that pop in my head at that moment. <laughs> but it's, I have to be respectful. I think that's the best word. Respectful that you know how to ride. If something happens, we'll deal with it. But I cannot tell you what all you're doing wrong. You know, I maybe can offer a suggestion or I'm just going to give you shit and say, stop doing that. Oh, my God. Um, but I think that is probably the one thing that I see all the time is when the wife gets on the bike, I still see the husband go, OK, well, now make sure you do this and make sure you do that and make sure you pack this and make sure you pack that. And I'm like, oh, my God. OK, it's been two years now. I've been riding for two years. Shut up. <laughs> I know what I'm doing at this point. Um, or whatever, but um, I feel like just as a spouse, e mm -hmm. either way, you know, you have to just kind of go, okay, I'm just going to let that happen. <laughs> it's just going to let them ride their own ride. Yeah. And I'm going to shut up. And you just kind of have to, and it sucks, but you have to do it. Right. And I think it's, it's even more difficult mm -hmm. when spouses have something to say like constructive criticism yeah because they're concerned around what ramifications is this going to have in the bedroom or <laughs> at supper time is she or, not ever going to talk to me for a week yeah i got you. yeah and if i say this is she going to cut my nuts off at, <laughs> during the night no i'm just going to shave your eyebrows there, there you go down. see so I, yes. you, you talked about confidence what else do sure. you get um, um, out of riding community very much like I said I love riding in a group um, I love why? all of the people why do you like group so we a lot of our fans especially yeah, don't like group riding I hear <laughs> especially when it comes to like when accidents happen yes and I feel like okay look accidents are gonna happen unfortunately but that's what's gonna happen um, even amazing great writers are still going to bump into each other at a stop sign. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you know, I feel like it's going to happen, but I feel like the majority of the ride is so much fun mm -hmm. and you communicate without communicating. You know, you, you can look at somebody and go, that was an amazing twisty ride with just your eyes and somebody acknowledged that back. Um, I know whenever we when we ride with a group and we get to the next destination where we're stopping and we talk about oh my god did you see this did you see that how much fun is this and um did you see that crazy ass cow i mean whatever but it's fun and it's you have somebody to talk to and somebody that is experiencing the same things that you are so experiencing the experience yeah yeah and i feel like when there have been times when, uh, I don't know how much you hate them, but like charity rides when there's a million bikes <laughs> and we're riding in a parade. I love that. <laughs> I know as far as like my hands and my clutch and everything's going out, but looking up and seeing hundreds of motorcycles, hundreds of people doing the same thing for the same reason, it's kind of like we're all coming together to do something good. And right. like the bring it home I, oh, event. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that was a blast. I mean, it sucked. Just <laughs> things are going to happen. Yeah. Things are going to suck. But honestly, that type of yeah. uh, parade, if you will, yeah. 
I don't mind because I the rider skill level mm-hmm. didn't play a factor because mm-hmm. we were on a closed runway sure. and we had the entire runway <laughs> to true. work with. Yeah. So I, I didn't have to be as concerned around some douchebag who they only ride for a toy run. Yeah. And that's the only time their motorcycle sees the daylight. Yeah. So and I know <clears throat> that whenever I'm, you know, in, in a big group, um, like back whenever we would ride with Panther Creek, there were times where I was like right next to probably the worst rider in the whole pack. <laughs> and I'm okay with that because it was, yeah, it's frustrating because they can't maintain their speed or they can't maintain their track or whatever the case might be. But I also feel like I have enough patience that I can be next to them and make sure that they're safe um, and provide the gap for the people behind us. And that way they don't experience that this person keeps coming right in front of me or (laughs) whatever the case is and you know what they'll get better but I also feel like again but going back to the I am not going to tell somebody you're a terrible writer or you're doing a bad job it's something like just in the future maybe you would want to think about doing something like this you know and kind of saying something but make friends with that person because you don't know what the skill level of that person is it could be guy or girl right Right. And, you know, we talked about this on a, a past episode where if you see something, say something. If, if you are a more skilled writer mm-hmm. and you are seeing something that may help this person be better, l- let them know. Just don't be a dick about it. Right. You have to be polite. And sometimes it's what's going to work better for somebody. Yeah. I, I'm not trying to be sexist or whatever here, but there are times when I have seen a guy do something incredibly stupid and I want to say something nice to him, but I also know he's not going to hear me. And so it's kind of like, hey, baby, can you go tell this guy <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> in a way that he will hear you <laughs> that he's right. driving like crap? And, you know, as a road captain, it's kind of my job to go and make those, those statements to folks. Yeah. But it seems like... People who are just the writers in the group, they don't have any extra responsibility for the group. Mm -hmm. They don't say things. And let's, you know, let's be realistic. If I'm, if I'm a road captain in a group of 20 motorcycles, I can't see what everyone is doing. I'm focusing on Mm -hmm. what am I doing in the back? Mm -hmm. What's going on in the center and what's going on with Justin leading or whoever's leading the ride. That's what I'm focusing in on. And I, I need the commentary from folks who are inside the group mm-hmm. to say, hey, this guy's, you know, and I feel not maintaining like, track or speed. Sure. Can you talk to him? And I feel like people that know that they're not the best of riders will find a place in the middle. Yeah. Because they can hide that way. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they won't be judged necessarily. And I think that's why I like riding in the middle because or somewhere in the middle because then I can kind of see it and maybe I can help um, or maybe I can say something or, or whatever or I can at least protect them and, I, and that's I guess what I look at too even though I'm trying to like see where you guys are but I'm very like I just want to chill and ride and enjoy the ride I'm not trying to race down the the, the curved roads I'm not trying to go 40,000 miles an hour down a highway I'm just trying to enjoy myself yeah you're out there to cruise right I'm a big cruiser. And and there are some people in our group that do cruise, and it's really fun to ride with him. Like, I love Hasso. <laughs> well, yeah, because he's a very yeah, we ride conservative very, rider. And I love riding next to him because I, he's not unpredictable. You know, I I feel comfortable riding with him right. and or near him. And there's other people that it's like, I feel like I'm holding them back. I know they want to ride faster. Or I run. I know they want to do some things. Um, and I feel like sometimes whenever we do get into groups, there have been times where um, you know, women or um, I, I see it more from women. I mean, I'm not trying to generalize here, but I see it more from women than I do for men. It's like if men get in and they feel like this is outside their comfort zone, they'll just push through. And I know a lot of women will pull back and mm-hmm. gap and gap and gap. And I know we had like one time where there was um, a woman that was riding with us and she ended up just dropping out. It was just too much. And and I understand that, you know, that happens sometimes whenever you're like writing and you're like, okay, this isn't what I thought it was going to be or 
you know, whatever the case might be, fine. If you need to drop out, that's fine. Um, but try to keep up, <laughs> you know, do the best you can. But um, I think like when you're writing, I know like when I ride with you guys, I'm usually the only woman that's actually writing. Right. Um, you know, the like, you know, Faith and Miss Bird, you know, they'll ride on the back, which is great. And I love that they do that because um, they're just as funny. <laughs> um, but like there's not many others. And so I feel like I'm riding with a bunch of guys. And as a woman, sometimes I do feel a little intimidated. I know like Ken pushes my buttons on purpose because it's funny to him. And okay, I know I'm a feminist, but still. <laughs> um, but I know, and, and he ropes me in, but he's the only one that really, it, that messes with me. And he only does it because he's, he's being funny and he loves me, I don't care, it's fine. Um, but I don't feel like anybody else like doesn't like writing with me or you know, makes me feel bad about myself. Right. There's, there's the judgment yeah, level yeah. is a lot lower, but I mean, at the end of the day, the OG crew and, and all the spouses were all family. True. So Ken ragging on you, that's, that's yeah. just going to happen. That's going to happen. That's just what a, um, a bigger little brother is going to do. I know. Be. And one of these days I will have a comeback. <laughs> <laughs> one of these days it's going to be like one time and that's the only time it's ever going to happen, but maybe. So but, speaking around like community yeah. and all that, what are some of the things that you do or maybe websites or Facebook yeah. groups or anything like that, that helps you build the community? And are there any that you like? that are more geared towards women? Yeah, um, so, and I wrote this down because I didn't want to mess it up, um, but there is a Facebook group. Um, you do have to apply. Um, you can't just pop in and just decide to be a member. So um, it's called the Motorcycle Confidence and Exploration, hashtag by women for women. Um, it's put on by Women's Motorcycle Tours. Um, they also have, like right now, well, it's the 17th, so not now, but last weekend, um, they had, uh, you know, online conference. So they do have conferences. They do put on rides all the time. I'm not really an active member, but I love to like just look. So on, you're a voyeur uh, very of much, this Facebook group. Very much. And, and it's so like, it's so amazing when, and I feel like that's one of those things that us women do best is whenever we want to bring somebody up, we do it <laughs> with flair. True, and, but um, you guys are also really amazing at tearing other each other down. You know what? Down. Shut up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it happens. It does happen. But like this group, every time that I go, because um, you know it pops up on my Facebook feed, and especially right now, all I'm doing is playing on Facebook. I'm so bored. But um, whenever I go through and look, it's like, it's one woman after another after another talking about their journey and what they did and um it's just so um inspiring mm. and seeing all these people do things and i'm not saying that it's women's i mean yes this group is a women's only i think <laughs> i can't say for sure but i think it's a women's only which is fine um but i think like us women we kind of need to feel supported mm -hmm. and feel confident and while riding a motorcycle is a unisex thing, it's always been portrayed as a man's thing. Right. And so seeing, I feel like everybody's talking about the changes in our society, but it's seeing representation, you know, of ourselves. And when you see other women ride, it inspires you. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, she's doing it, why can't I? Um, you know, back in the day, I used to have hot pink pigtails on my, on my helmet. And I loved it um, because I don't want to look like another guy on a motorcycle. I want to make sure that people know I'm a girl. Right. <laughs> and um, because they pay attention a little bit more. And so many times I would drive by, you know, I, we call them mommy murder vans. <laughs> and little girl in the back seat, I would wave and she did this big smile. And it was like, see, this is not a boy's thing. You can do it too. Yeah. And... Um, so seeing like seeing this Facebook group, um, you know, they do a lot of activities and I would love to do them. Um, so maybe one of these days I'll actually join up whenever we're like real life people again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whenever the COVID has uh, <laughs> yes. subsided. I know. And my my work schedule is weekends. You know, I work weekends. So it's it is difficult sometimes. But, um, but I would love to go to that just because, uh, you know, everybody is trying to support each other and I feel like that's kind of one of the biggest things I feel as a woman writer if I'm writing with a group of people and 
I'm not feeling that support. Um, you know, back in the day before I started writing with you, you know, it was very frustrating. And there were so many times where it was like, I just don't want to do this. It's just too hard. I it's just too many. It's too much. It's too too much pressure. I've got enough pressure at home. You know, I've got enough pressure at work. I don't need something that's supposed to be relaxing to be pressure too. Yeah, the the number one reason people buy the motorcycle is typically yeah. just as a Freedom. as a release, right? Yes. An, an escape from reality. I mean, what's the joke? You never see um, a motorcycle at a psychi- psychiatrist's office. Yeah, unless it's his. <laughs> yeah, or hers. Or hers. Um, but I mean, I feel like that's kind of one of the big things. It's while, yes, men, you guys need to be supported too. You know, I'm not taking anything away from you guys, but I feel like we've always seen motorcycles as a guy thing. Sure. And whenever, it is definitely a male dominated sport. <laughs> yeah, it is. But, and women want to do it, but it's like we don't have anybody telling us how to do it other than like our husband telling us what we're doing wrong. Sure. <laughs> so I feel like, you know, just. I mean, oh my gosh, women go to support groups for everything. But um, but I also feel like it's so helpful. You know, when you can when you can go to this Facebook page, you can see it. And we have a link, so you're going to put it in the notes. So if people want to go. God damn, I'm, I'm being ordered by my guest. You're not being ordered. I'm just So yes, um, we will have in the show notes for this, uh, between two wheels.com, the two is spelled out T-W-O. And just click on the show notes link and you'll be able to see it for this episode and all of our other episodes as well. Uh, so we'll have the link in there for that Facebook group. Um, since Tracy's giving me homework, I'm going to give her some homework. Um, <laughs> let's go ahead and try to build out a list sure. of the w- women geared mm-hmm. motorcycling groups. So well, the, we know like the, the Lita's mm-hmm. and a bunch of the other, you know, ladies of Harley, things mm-hmm. like that. So there's a lot of different things out there. So we'll get that updated and put that in the show notes as well. Mm-hmm. And I do, I do want to say, you know, if a lot of, if you are part of a hog, sh- hog group, there usually is a ladies of Harley. Yeah, um, L-O-H. Mm-hmm. And um, while Harley is not necessarily allowed to be a men only or women only thing. So even if it is ladies of Harley, men are allowed to go. Yeah. So um, I do, you know, suggest putting a little effort if you're not uh, like a, an officer or somebody that's in charge of, you know, setting these things up, but, you know, put effort into it and go do the things and hear what other women are saying and what, because we have different perspectives on different things. So when you, when you say officer, you mean like a chapter officer of the hog sure, chapter. Yes. yes. So if, if you are in a senior role, mm-hmm. make sure you bring in a good person a good woman to actually lead your mm-hmm. ladies of harley chapter mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I, again i don't i don't think any guy out there is going to bitch and complain about ladies of harley if it means oh, no. that his significant other is going to be enjoying herself mm-hmm as well as enjoying the same sport he does right and i do feel like at times um you know if a couple is used to riding together that it's good for them to not ride together sometimes so if it's you know you go do the guy thing with the guys and me go do the girl thing with the girls yeah. and then um, come back and talk about our experiences i feel like that's yeah. good for a, you know a relationship anyways but um but then you can also see you know how other other people ride to and you're not stuck if you will and I know how my like hypothetically let me use me I know how my husband rides I know what to look for I'm used to riding with him and you get stuck in that re, you know re, repetition there we mm-hmm. go where whenever you break up and you go ride somewhere else, then it's like, oh, crap, there's other people. <laughs> yeah. They ride way different. Um, and I feel like it kind of gets the juices flowing a little bit more again and reminds you that there are a lot of other people and you can't ride the same way all the time. You have right. to change it up. So, And for folks who live in larger metropolitan areas like Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin, Houston, New York City, mm-hmm. Cincinnati, Miami, whatever, any major city. Any other city? Yeah, there's a, there's a few <laughs> others. Um, but any major city is going to have multiple Harley shops. Oh, yeah. And that typically means, unless they're all owned by the same company or the same family, mm-hmm. Um, they're going to have different hog chapters as well as different ladies of Harley. So mm-hmm. I think it's important too to go out mm-hmm. and test out all the different hog chapters mm-hmm. 
to see which one fits you better. Yeah. I know for us, you and I, we tried out a number of mm -hmm. hog chapters after we got kicked out of Panther <laughs> Creek. Yeah, well. Um, but, you know, we semi found a new home. Um, it, we, it was just, and here's the thing though, okay. Yes. We got we got sniped. Well, um, no. And brought into another hog chapter because of <laughs> did, some motorcycle was, games. Yeah, yeah, but and there competitions. was there was still drama. Oh yeah. And I guess that's kind of what I always say. Yes, chapters and any club group, anybody, we're gonna have drama. There's gonna be drama in every single group, but it's the effort that you put into it. Okay, if you have, I mean, I say this from personal experience because I was an activities officer for <laughs> the hog chapter and I, there was a lot to do and I loved doing it, but I would get a lot of people that would complain and say, well, why can't we do this or why can't we do this? And I'm like, well, why don't you come and help? Uh, yeah. No. You have to actually put forth effort in order to get something. You can't just show up and go plan this for me and let me just show up. Exactly. You're going to get out of it what you put yes. into it so you do have you do have to put effort whenever yeah. you're whenever you're hanging with a group you do have to put effort into it <laughs> so kind of sticking with the theme of yeah. hog and dealing with you know the motorcycle companies uh -huh. out there <laughs> what have you seen as some major differences in like men and women riders and the motorcycle industry and how they are attracting those riders yeah um, I feel like, here's the thing, I, I want to say, let's say, I want to say that they're getting better, mm -hmm. but I feel like my opinion is kind of skewed because of the Harley D shop that we go to and the dealership that we, or the dealer, or no, salesperson mm -hmm. that we deal with all the time because he's very nice and he knows me. Um, so he pays attention to me, but there have been so many times where I've gone to, um, I mean, I went with my cousin just her and I, we wanted to go look at a motorcycle. We go to a Harley shop. Does anybody come and talk to us? No, but the clothing lady did. <laughs> and I said, no, we're just kind of looking at motorcycles just to get kind of an idea. And, and she sat on a couple of them. And did somebody come up to us? No. And I feel like we, there's so many times where I walk into a dealership and I get from the salesperson, they're all over you or they're all over the guys. And they're like, hey, go try this bike. Hey, go try this bike. And I may get a sideways high or, you know, I'm like, for all we know, or for all he knows, I could be the one actually wanting to come in and buy a motorcycle. And I'm coming in with all my guy friends. So I feel like I don't get as I feel like it is a woman thing. I hate saying that, but it is, is that I don't get viewed as coming in to want to buy a motorcycle. I'm coming in to support you to buy a motorcycle. Right. Or I'm coming in to buy clothes or, you know, maybe I have an opinion on a back seat, but I feel like, and I, I know I wrote these in the notes too, but I feel like it needs to be an ask first situation. I feel like when you walk in, um, if we're together or if I'm separately, hey, do you ride? Do you ride on the front or the back? I ride on the front. Great. Are you looking for a motorcycle? Put that question out there mm -hmm. instead of just assuming that you are the one to buy the motorcycle or you are the one who's thinking about upgrades. I mean, I upgrade the shit out of my bike all the goddamn time. <laughs> Bec and I, I would do a lot more if I could. Um, but because I'm just, it, you know, I... I Maybe it's I'm a chick and I'm all about accessories. I don't know. <laughs> but I feel like it's things are going to change. So I kind of see that point as, and I'm not trying to wave off the aspect that sure. they're doing, but I think it's more around the laws of average. Sure. So. But again, how how are women ever going to ride more motorcycles if we're not even encouraged when we walk in the door? Exactly. And. You know, we always talk about Hank and why we like going and dealing with him. And yeah, I mean, I wasn't sure if I could say his name. Or oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We, <laughs> okay, cool. Because he's it, really nice. I we really say like it all him. the time. But but yeah, Hank knows that you have your own bike. Yes. So the fact that he knows that, and I mean, he is a lifelong sales guy. So he knows how to memorize. Okay, <laughs> your face, uh -huh. this bike this name yeah and he's able to do that and it's great but 
to your point, yeah, we walk into any other shop. Yeah. And yeah, the motor clothes chicks, because that's usually who's working in motor clothes, goes and talks to you yeah. while I get bombarded by salespeople. Yeah. And and for and we could be going in for completely opposites. Yeah. I could be going in for a motorcycle and you can go in for another helmet or pair of boots. Yeah. Because, you know, you and your shoes. <laughs> but um, I just feel like if they would just start asking in the instead of assuming. And yes, I get law of averages. Yes, it's still a man's sport. But I feel like it's changing. A lot of it is trying to encourage the women. The clothes has gotten better. You know, instead of tits out and <laughs> little tiny tops that you can't really ride in, um, yeah. that they're getting longer so my butt crack doesn't hang out. And, um, you know, the shirts are, are fitting a little bit better um, so you can actually ride in them. They're, they're actually looking at women's cut shirts sure. versus just a standard cotton T-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the the um, it used to be that the button down shirts, um, all of, almost all of the men's shirts, you'd see them all the time with the snaps, and women didn't have that, right. and so yeah, it would flap in your face <laughs> when you're riding. But yep. now I'm starting to see a lot of the women's shirts are having those buttons too, and um, it's just little things like that. Um, you know, I mean, shoes are shoes, helmets are helmets. Everything is going to be changing and moving and everything like that. But do, how do you feel about just the fashion? options that you have you know guys we were fine wearing black <laughs> okay that's that's okay it does seem like the guy section is very black yeah the girl section honestly i like it it's been getting better over the years it has but i feel like the the fit has been getting better but i've always liked the color choices there's just there's so many different colors and there's so many different things and you know i loved it whenever it was you know um uh, Valentine's Day and it was like you got a percentage off of anything you bought that was red oh, I love red so I'm okay with yeah. buying red um, you know I like the you know St. Patrick's Day shirts I like you know I like all of those kind all of the things. sparklies yeah. and all that stuff I love sparklies I love you know glitter but I also know there's a lot of women out there that don't and it's like I think that is the biggest thing that I see it's it's most of the shirts have the glitter <laughs> and I feel like we're not all glitter people. Right. I love me some glitter, okay, but um, there are times when, can I just have a normal shirt? Can I just have something that, that I don't have to hand wash only and I can just throw it in the washer, throw it in the dryer, call it good. And something else that I've noticed too is, at least on the men's like button down shirts, mm -hmm. the branding isn't stupid, like all over the place mm -hmm. type of thing. But on women's, it is like when I'm trying to shop for you, and I know you don't want to be a walking billboard. <laughs> I prefer you, not to. You know, unless it's something just awesome, it is a, it is very difficult to find yeah. just a standard shirt that you would wear mm -hmm. that's not just blazed out a Harley Davidson. Yeah, and I feel like, I mean, hell, you have a Harley Davidson tattoo on your body. Yeah. Uh, will I? No. <laughs> and I feel like, I don't know. Again, I'm generalizing. I'm sorry. But I feel like a lot of women aren't going to do that. Men probably, there's probably a lot of men out there that have Harley something tattooed on their body. So I feel like with the um, branding of everything, mm -hmm. women do love brands. Don't get me wrong. I mean, hello, you have... I'm not even going to list it because I don't want to pay them royalties. But, um, you mm. know, there's so many brands out there and women are very particular on, I want to make sure that if I'm getting a name brand something that it shows. Mm -hmm. um, but Harley's a little bit different. Um, I feel like while I love myself a Harley shirt and there are some really cute, cute shirts, if it didn't have the, um, the big Harley label on it, I could wear it to work. You know, there's so yeah. many things that I could do, but... I can't wear something that says Harley Davidson in, you know, in an office or, I mean, well, I don't work in an office, but, you know, yeah, I, I could you're, never wear it in an office. When you're working in an event. If I'm in a meeting or yeah. something like that, I can't wear something that says Harley Davidson on it because I don't want, I don't want an impression of me to be, I'm a biker, yeah. you know, I, because, because of the type of job that I have, True. I have to, you know, be different. But, um, I feel like there's so many shirts out there that 
in so many cute tops and the jeans are adorable and hats oh my god I love their hats <laughs> and I'm kind of okay with the hats having Harley Davidson on it but yeah if it wasn't branded so much mm-hmm. it could be little it can be at the bottom it can be something small it can be hidden in the design um, just you know not so much freaking Harley Davidson, right? Um, and then charging an exorbitant amount oh of money God, to so to market for them, yeah, right? Yeah. You're paying to to advertise for I them. I know. At, I'm buying a hundred dollar hoodie, and it's got Harley Davidson all, all over it. I'm like, uh yeah. <laughs> it's and, so and rough. So over the last, I would say, five years or so, we've started seeing a lot more women motorcycle content creators. Yeah. So a lot of them on Instagram, a lot of YouTube channels are coming up. I'm wondering if that and seeing, you know, call for what it is, the proliferation of that's a big word, bigger and bigger YouTube mm-hmm. creators. I, I think again, it goes back to representation. Right. The so, more you see, the more you want to do. Exactly, and. I'm I'm hoping that as we see women like the geared weight raven and um I love that you know all of this by the way. I want to say her on two wheels or her two wheels something like that. another one. Yeah. And yes, it helps that they are attractive women. Yeah, well, you know. The geared raven is an older attractive woman mm-hmm. and the other one is a younger attractive woman. Mm-hmm. But they're both on their own motorcycles and they're out there creating content. I'm I'm wondering if we're going to start seeing manufacturers see the popularity that these content creators are mm-hmm. are bringing in and growing and maybe start making stuff and listening to the input yeah. of these women. Yeah. I and I feel like that's how I mean that's how the sales world is, right? Is you and I feel like Harley sometimes is a little Behind the times occasionally? No, pretty much always. <laughs> okay, okay. I was like, I don't want to say anything bad, but... Oh, they're, they're so used to it. Okay, well, I love you guys, Harley, because I will only have a Harley motorcycle, but... <laughs> Sorry, but it's true. Um, but I feel like, yeah, as as more women get involved in, and, and participate in the world uh, that is motorcycling, um, I feel like the dealerships and everybody will start coming around like that, too. So, I mean... Uh, while, yes, I want to be nice and I don't want to sit there and go, you know, women have it bad and it sucks and it's not fair. It's it's an ever-changing world, okay? We're, right. Everybody is going to get better and everyone's going to start doing it. And the more women that get involved, it won't ever be, you know, eventually it won't be a men and women. It'll just be a person thing. Right. You know, we just right. all ride. Who cares? How do you fit on a motorcycle? I think the hardest part, that women are facing right now is simply history. Yeah. I mean, yes, there's been some very famous women writers yeah. over the years, but those are the outliers. Those are the ones that stand out because who else are they compared to? Exactly. So when you look at a hundred plus years of mm-hmm. male dominated mm-hmm. sport and yes, women have been involved, but not, at the same level or not even I would say from a percentage mm-hmm. standpoint they're not even 10 percent and it's not because that's from a registered bike perspective but who people see mm-hmm. you you don't see a lot of women out there riding and it's always like a novelty when you do right exactly it's like oh look at that there's a whole bunch of women in that motorcycle group that's so cool but do you say that when the guys come up no No, because it's used you're used to seeing that exactly and i feel like eventually you know there shouldn't i feel like eventually there won't be a first woman of whatever there won't be you know a women's only group of mike of bikers people go yeah, that's nice. <laughs> I, that's kind of what I want. I want it to be like, it's so normal that it's not a big deal anymore, you know? Yeah. And I feel like we will get there, but it's going to take a long time. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't know if it's going to happen in my lifetime, but um, I'd like to hope so. Um, but I feel like, again, you know, I feel like with women um, writers that we just need a little bit of extra support every so often mm-hmm. because... I am, when I visually look at, or, or I guess when I see it in my head, 
of all these motorcycle people that I know that ride motorcycles, there's very few women. And I feel like I don't want to be like a trailblazer or something like that. It, it should be a normal thing. Riding a motorcycle is a unisex thing. It should be that way. Um, and I feel like when women are out there, occasionally they feel like some have to kind of sexualize themselves up a little bit to, you know, be noticed. Yeah. Or, um, you know, some it's like, well, because I'm not pretty now, you don't, you don't even care. You don't even look at me. You don't even acknowledge that I'm here. You know, things like that. And I, I feel like where women, we have, we, we have a visual aspect to us. Yeah. We have to look a certain way in order to get well, either noticed or taken seriously. It's like you can't be too pretty, you can't be too ugly to be taken seriously. Right. And and let's be realistic. You look at the Instagram stuff mm-hmm. out there, it's it's the highly sexualized yeah. uh, women who are making it big. Sure. And and actually getting something out of social media. Sure. Um but kind of thinking about the support and that right. type of stuff. What are some tips or advice you could give women who haven't ridden before or are thinking about getting in the driver position um, or just in general for those that ride? What are some, some tips you can give them? Sure. Um, I think, and I even like wrote this down because I didn't want to mess this up. I was like, the first thing that I wanted to say was to speak up. That's, you know, when I was learning how to ride, I didn't do that very often. And, um, and it and it if i'd have just said this is bullshit <laughs> stop treating me like a baby i want to just ride and so shut the fuck up <laughs> and leave me alone i feel like i they would have mm-hmm. and i would have had a more enjoyable experience um i feel like um when you're getting on your motorcycle here's some little things when you're getting on your motorcycle i do this all the time where i used to do this all the time i don't do it as much anymore thank goodness but it's when you're with a group of people all right guys we're ready to go everybody get on and everybody's getting on well you know i have a certain order that i have to put things on you know i have the helmet and then i have to put my gloves on and then i you know have to make sure that i'm buttoned and then i have to make sure that my radio's working and that my saddlebags are locked and all of the things my little checklist that's going on in my head and i feel like everyone has their own checklist Mm -hmm. But I know that with me, and I've seen this with a lot of women, that I don't see this so much with men, but maybe it's happening. I just don't see it. But I see the tense in the women. Then they're trying to go as fast as they can because, by God, we do not want to be holding the men up. Um, and I see that. And I feel like now I'm, I go through my checklist. And if I'm not ready, I'm going to say, I'm not ready, guys. I'm sorry. You can go without me. I'll catch up. But I'm not ready to go. I'm, I'm not done. And um, I feel like when you can say that, and I mean, obviously the group that we ride in, we always make sure that we're ready. Everyone's ready to go. But there have been times where, I mean, Justin's done it once, where he forgot to put his gloves on or something happened there and he had to pull off and put his gloves on. Um, Yeah. So, I mean, we go through our checklist, but I feel like not being in that rush, like I'm holding people up. You aren't holding people up. You're doing your checklist and maybe you have more items in your checklist than somebody else does yes i do take a quick minute to check my lipstick in the mirror (laughs) okay that's on my checklist this may not be on yours but it's on mine um you want those lips to look nice for all the bugs that are going to hit your windshield no i have a screen out in front of my face they're not going to hit my mouth although sometimes they do get stuck in there and it's (laughs) gross um no but i want to make sure that looks like again i don't want to be mistaken for being a guy i want people to look at me and go oh she's definitely wearing lipstick that's a chick right there so again speak up say something um if you're not ready you're not ready if someone's pressuring you okay, look, I I hear you. I know what you're trying to say to me, but the way that you're saying it to me is making me where I don't want to do this anymore. So find a better way to communicate to me or walk away. (laughs) That's the nice way of saying, shut the fuck up and leave me alone. (laughs) Um, You know, but say something. Don't just hold it in and then, because you hold it in and you don't ever want to do it again. It just becomes pain. Um, The being honest about your ability um, and riding your ride Um, If you're an early rider or if you've been doing it for a long time, don't be afraid to say that. Um, That's not just a woman thing. That's a man thing, too. Yeah. That's everybody. Um, I think on this one, I think it's... It's pride a lot. Well, I think it's more important for any rider 
to be honest with themselves sure. about their ability. Mm-hmm. I know what I am skilled at what I'm capable of doing and I know what I'm not capable of doing Mm -hmm. or what I'm not willing to do Mm -hmm. and because of that I know what roads Mm -hmm. I can ride how hard I need to ride them that type of thing sure and And I know when I go into I'm sorry I mean just cut you off but whenever we go into a group um, there's been times where uh, like early on we had some people that showed up that I didn't know how they rode. They didn't know how I would ride. Um, And so I I asked them. I'm like, so I'm the kind of person that just takes it easy. I just like to enjoy myself. I'm not a speedster. Are you okay riding behind me like that? Well, maybe I want to go in front. Okay, you go right ahead. It's not going to hurt my feelings. I don't want to slow you down. So go in front <laughs> right. or whatever the case is. If it's, you know, I've been riding for a really long time, but I have never ridden with a group. Um, say so. Yeah. Because then we can sit there and go, OK, well, look, these these are our hand signals that we're going to use. And this is what this means. And you ride in your track and don't cross tracks and move up or move. You know, whatever the case is, we can tell you this is how we ride in a group. Yeah, I am. I am all about trying to teach people to do something. So. You know, if anybody would ever come to me and say, hey, you know, I, I've been riding a long time. I'm not too comfortable riding in a group. Do you have any tips? Oh, yes, my friend, let me tell you. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I want you to have a positive, good experience, too. I think on that one, too, you, Hasso, are both kind of the epitome of riding your own ride. <laughs> yeah. Um, but now I think that's because of the people that y'all ride with. True. You ride with a group that not only preaches it, but practices it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be the key for anyone out there riding, especially in a group environment. Mm -hmm. Um, But. Well, and here's the other thing, too. I was a road captain as well. Yes. And so uh, I know how to lead a group and I know how to tail a group and I know how to keep everyone together. Um, If I'm going to lead a group, I am going to be very safe. And I'm going to be very careful because all of my little ducklings are following me. Yeah, exactly. And that's you take how ownership I look it. at it. Yeah. Um, and I'm not going to break the law. And I know that going in the, when I'm riding in the front, if I'm doing 50, the person in the back is probably doing 60 because that's just how the caterpillar works. Um, and so I don't want them to speed either, you know, so maybe I go a little slower, but I know that. And I also know that in our group, I should never lead. <laughs> Because I would drive you guys insane. Yeah. (laughs) Because I'm going to be safe. But I feel like you also need to know kind of that. How do you ride? What is your ability? My ability is to keep my group safe. Right. And um, whether that means I'm in the middle or the back, um, you know, I gather all the little ducklings that leave the group and push them back together. I mean, I'm happy doing that. I know that with my riding style, I am not a good leader for our group. Right. If it was people we didn't know then yes because i can keep us safe um i'm not gonna hot dog it i'm not gonna go crazy um you know that sort of a thing but like with our group that's i know my ability my ability is not to lead your group (laughs) yeah i mean if it comes down to the ogs it's gonna be justin or i who are probably gonna be pushing the lead yeah um and then probably myself or Ken or Hasso in the back. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that's just because most of the time we're riding, you're working. Yeah, I know. But uh, But but there have been lots of times where you've led and I tailed. Yeah, and And that's a, and really that comes down to a trust thing. Um, And for anyone out there riding in a group, you need to trust your tail gunner or the rear road captain or whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. Because people think the person up front's leading the ride. That's not the case. Mm. Nothing happens up front without the person in the back controlling the situation Mm -hmm. in a good group. Sure. And I do also feel like, uh, sorry, uh, I also feel like you need to, you need to go old school sometimes. Um, There are so many times where I am not hooked up with comms with you guys. Um, and that's how my life has been, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. I haven't had comms a lot. Um, I don't remember how many times we were riding a group back in the day where you guys were on what, CBs? What were you on? Is that right? 
Oh, uh, when like Haas and I were riding? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. CB. And you guys would be talking, and I'll never forget this. We were in a group ride somewhere on a trip or something, and all of a sudden, everyone starts slowing down. I'm in the middle. I have no idea what's happening. And we slow down, and everyone's doing a U-turn. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening right now? I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go with it. And But it was like, I, because I wasn't in that communication. And I don't know how many times. But now it's kind of like, I'm kind of glad that that happened because... Um, it now forced can, you to be a better rider. Yeah, I can look at people and go, okay, that one, he keeps looking over his shoulder. He wants to get over. Okay, let me go block the lane, and then the whole group can get in. So even if you're not, like, on comms of some sort, um, as long as you are familiar enough with each other that you know, like, okay, well, you know, if you look back and you see me in a lane, you know I'm not great at blocking people because I don't want to piss anyone off. But if I'm in a lane, it's because I know that we need to get over. <laughs> so I'm trying to tell you this yeah. um, somehow. And I feel like, again, it's knowing what you're able to do. Don't take a lead or tail position because you think that's what you're supposed to do. If you're not comfortable, don't do that. Do something better. You know, there's always different positions. Um, so there's that one. Um, I know, I know. I'm sorry. I talk a lot. I don't, Jonathan says, well, you're going to get on. And I'm like, oh, well, this is going to be like a two-hour episode because I can't shut up. <laughs> Are we at two hours? Not yet. <laughs> um, okay. So uh, one of the other things is find the right bike for you. And I know we kind of, sorry, I know we kind of talked about that earlier, um, you know, with me finding that street bob, that well, was the right bike. You know, you say find the right bike for you. What sure. are some things that women out there should be looking for when trying to find the right bike? For I them? think one of the first things that we do whenever we're going into our first bikes is intimidation. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was the big thing with the Road King. It was like, uh, this is too much. I can't. And when you start saying that, it, when you first say, this is too much, I can't do this, or whatever it is that's negative, that is not the right bike for you, just get off right now. <laughs> because you don't need to make it be the right bike for you. Um, it's just not. So get off, go find something else, go sit on something else. You will know. I knew. Whenever I sat on that street pop, I was like, oh, I love this bike so much. <laughs> <laughs> and I've done that with every bike that I've gotten on. I was like, th at that time in my life, that was the right bike for me. And... I, you know, I, I needed it to work from a smaller bike to a bigger bike. I just needed to be that way. And I know some people can just hop on a freaking Ulster Glide and just be fine. And I'm like, I will never have one of those bikes. <laughs> that isn't like driving a truck. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Um, it's just not me at all. But you could if you had I could to. if I had to. But I don't ever want to. <laughs> I mean, but I so could. Let's, let's divert there. Who cares about the time? I have plenty of time left on this month's <laughs> upload schedule. So... <laughs> Um, you know, we, we look at things like the size of a bike, uh -huh. you know, the weight or this engine CC or anything like that. Would you agree that okay. there is literally a motorcycle for everyone out there? Oh yeah, absolutely. And it's okay if a woman is not riding a Harley, it's yeah. okay to your husband or significant other rides a Harley and you ride a Honda or you ride a Suzuki or a BMW. Or you ride a turquoise Vespa. That would be amazing. <laughs> I'm just, just saying, saying. If, if, a, if any Vespa showed up. Oh, I love a Vespa. To any of the OG <laughs> or Bike and Bird stuff. They, whoever's on it has to realize that that bike will be taken away from them and ridden by Ken and I both. No. Just because of the photo op that alone. That's true. That's true. It is so fun, though. I mean, I've never actually rode one. That's the thing. I've never actually done it. I've always wanted to. Anyways, anyways, um, besides but, the fact. But I will say that, like, the... the power in your engine does make a difference. Mm -hmm. When I was on the boulevard, it was, what, an eight? I don't know. It was very small. 650. Sure. Yeah, let's go there. Um, and so trying to keep up with my ex who was on a Road King that was kind of souped up a little bit was difficult. Um, it was difficult to keep up with anybody else. And I think that's a frustration too. So if you're going to get on a motorcycle, I think you also need to see what kind of person you are. I know if you're a... Um, 
if you're a solo rider, it doesn't matter what size engine, it's fine. Everything is fine. To a degree, to I, degree, I would agree. But if you're right, if you're used, if you're riding with your spouse, you want to be able to keep up with them. If you're yeah. riding with your best friend, you want to be able to keep up with them. You know, whatever that is. It's um, one of those things where if you're riding partner, whoever that is, sure, is and the reason that you get, are getting a motorcycle, if it ro- if it depends on somebody else too, yeah, you want to make sure that you at least match. Yeah. Somehow. So you don't want to be in a situation where your riding buddy is on on a hopped up touring bike and a lot of the miles that y'all are going to be riding are on the highway Mm -hmm. and you go get a sportster yeah no it only has five gears and uh, if you're getting 883 and you're on the highway it's going to be screaming in fifth gear trying to keep up just just on the posted speed limits in Mm -hmm. texas you know we have a couple that 80 mile per hour posted those sportsters are screaming an 883 at that speed. Mm-hmm. So things like that to take into consideration. If you are, and some of the things I always tell people, don't buy the bike that fits you today. Buy the bike that you can grow into. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What can you do on this bike? Can you keep this bike for, don't look at our track record, but if you can keep this bike for like three God, or I four years. I can't catch a break about you fuckers. <laughs> I had to It help, has you know. been like, three or four months since I bought, bought a motorcycle. <laughs> it's been longer than that. Shut up. January. Wait, really? This year? I can't keep up. Isn't that when I bought the uh, When's limited? the last time you changed your, your underwear? Yeah, that was when the last time you bought the bike was. Got it. Um, no, no, no. Okay, let's go back. <laughs> anyway, so. <laughs> I had to get the jabs in for so, Justin and Kent since they're not here. Yeah. So, I mean, choosing the right bike. Yeah. What are, what are some things that a woman should be looking for sure i think um well comfort first because you need to be comfortable in order to put effort into a sport because Mm -hmm. that's what this is um it's just like honestly though it's like no it's not like like driving a car it's really not actually now that i think about it you know when you go to a dealership and you find a car it's like usually what do you like you know i'll go get a charger i love me a charger but um is it practical for me? You know, okay, fine. I'll go get the... The panel know, van. Yeah. The, I'm not getting a panel van. I'm going to get a you, mommy murder van. That's Shut what up. you drive. That's work. Um, <laughs> that's completely different. <laughs> Folks, she traded in a Jeep Wrangler I did. for a Ford Transit Connect. <laughs> that's because I'm I'm balling now. But... Um, <laughs> <laughs> can't help myself. This shit's getting deep. Um, it, shut up. Anyways. But uh, uh, no, no, no. Okay. First, comfort... Obviously, you need to be able to sit on it and do you feel comfortable? Can you touch the ground? Can you reach, um, you know, can you reach the handlebars? Now, obviously, yes, you can have the bike lowered. You can um, pull the bars back. You can change the bars, change the seat. There's so many things that you can do to change it to make it more comfortable. But at least start with what feels good now. Yeah, because, from a stock perspective, right. what feels good. Because not everybody has a million dollars. You know, we can't always just afford, hey, let's add on all of these things that we want to do right now to this bike sometimes it takes years to get a new seat or a new handlebar or whatever the case might be so what do you feel comfortable now that you can ride for the foreseeable future until you do the research and you figure out um you know what works better you know are their handlebars better their grips better am i going to spend the money on having a really cool mirror that has a skull hand holding it hells yes (laughs) i like how you say spend my money to buy you know what <laughs> we're married it's mine um <laughs> so like for the handlebars and mm-hmm. things like that don't don't just grab them to see if you can grab them keep your arms up there for yes. a few minutes and is that comfortable is it hurting your back yeah does it hurt your wrist yeah. if, if it's if it's drag bars or lower bars and your arms are down mm-hmm. and you're more leaning forward if you have your handlebars, if you have your hands on the bars for a longer period of time, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm meaning like two to three, four minutes mm-hmm. holding them there, because you're going to get a good feel for mm-hmm. what your hands are going to feel like for, I would say, if a little right. bit of an extended right. amount of time. Right. And this is, I just thought of this just now, and it may be weird, but let me, let me explain. Oh. <laughs> so... I feel like, let's put it that way. Okay, first of all, let me just say that I am usually, well, I'm a taller than average woman, okay? You call me short, but that's only because you're freaking huge. But I'm still tall. I'm 5'10", 
Shut up. What okay. the fuck ever? You're five nine on a tall day. Okay. But I'm Jesus. taller than most women and or a lot of women. I wouldn't say most, but a lot of women. And so whenever I think about it, when a woman gets on, it's completely different than when an average size guy gets on. I am the same height as an average size guy. Okay. True. So when I get on a bike, most of the bikes will fit me because well, I'm average. Every bike I fit, you should fit. Yeah. Whereas most women, when they get on, it's going to feel big. Yeah. And I think as a spouse or somebody that is trying to help your woman get on a motorcycle, I think you need to think about whenever you think comfort, um, she's not as tall as you or probably isn't as tall as you. I'm like, well, again, I'm generalizing. But so you need to not necessarily jump on like a sportster. Those things are super tall, so they may not fit well. Um, something a little lower, like, again, I'm going to always go back to the street, Bob, because it was lower. Whenever I sat on right. it, I was comfortable. I could put my feet down. I had a little bit of bend in my knee. Again, I'm an average size man. So, <laughs> um, but when women get on there, you kind of need a smaller bike, but then here's the catch. Sometimes smaller bikes have bigger motors and they go much faster. And I, I would say... When we are talking about engine size, yeah, with a couple of outliers on the sport cruiser style motorcycles, sure. for the rest of them, it doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, if you, I would say it doesn't matter if you're going to a bigger motor. Mm -hmm. Like yours is a seventeen hundred cc. I'm glad you know that. Something like that. Um, I already got corrected last episode because my math was wrong, <laughs> but. You know, you're you're running a what a 108 cubic inch motor. You start out on a twin cam 96. And here's the other thing to this. I feel like you're speaking a different language. Yes. Um, so the I the motor size I, no, 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 and I, type I, is significantly different. Right. But But I guess that's my point that I'm trying to make is that when you and I go and buy a motorcycle and you sit there and start talking engine and blah 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 that's exactly what i start hearing i'm like mm -hmm. wah, 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 i wah, wah. don't care it's pretty and it's black and it's shiny and i want that <laughs> it fits right i don't i can't explain it and i feel like that's another thing too sometimes it does get very mansplaining <laughs> and it's like look i i don't understand it and mm -hmm. no matter what you tell me and how many times you tell me I don't care enough to yeah. understand it. If somebody says, hey, what size engine do you have? I'm like, uh, gets me from here to there. Yeah, whatever <laughs> comes in the Harley. Ask him. He knows that shit. I don't know. I don't care. Yeah. You know, size of engine does not matter to me. Right. But, and I think, I feel, you know, there's a lot of women out there that are the same way. So whenever you start talking bits and pieces yeah. to somebody, I'm like, you're going to get a blank stare. And then you're going to start going, you know, as a woman, I'm sitting here going, am I supposed to know this stuff? I mean, you guys talk about it all the time, and now I feel like I don't know enough. Yeah. And but I don't. I don't care. And in, <laughs> in, Yeah. And you're in a unique situation in the fact that you have a group of people that this is part of what we do for our, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going to say livelihood because we don't make any money from this. but. <laughs> no. But yeah, for your as, hobby, for your fun. Yeah, as content creators, we sure. have to know those types of things. Yeah. Um, so if I need to know, I can contact you. But when the people that are out there listening, yeah. if you're the average person, the average consumer, sure. if you know this and you know the size of the engines and everything, and you're trying to talk it over with with your spouse or someone in my position where I love to ride. I don't know what the fuck I'm writing, yeah. <laughs> but I love to do it. Then don't don't try to talk to him about it because then you're just going to make us feel stupid or like we're inadequate because we don't know what size engine is in our motorcycle. And I, I feel like, you know, with that um, kind of brings me to my other point too. I'm going to just kind of go right in there is finding the support, the right kind of support. Um, you know, there's the women's um, Facebook group. There's a lot of things out there that women can do. But I feel like as far as um, just what you can do with your friends and mm -hmm. your spouses, because I, I do feel like a lot of women do hop on because their spouse is already on. I feel like that happens a lot. Um, I know there's a lot of women out there that it's like, I don't need no damn man. I am on and I am gone. And which is more power to you, girl. 
but um, a lot of women do get on because their spouse is on and I feel like you need to be supportive (laughs) there's a lot of men out there that don't know how to be supportive in the right way Um, don't condescend don't mansplain don't explain to her in something like she's a child she is a grown-ass woman she can drive a car it's just like that I mean it's not but it is if you can drive a car and she's been doing it for a long enough time. She can figure this out. It's fine. Yeah. But it gets frustrating. And there are times where it's like, you know what? You need to just walk away and let me do this on my own. Let me figure this out on my own. I don't need you to breathe over my shoulder. I just need some space and let me figure it out. Um, and I feel like if a lot of men will just back off a little bit, that is the best way sometimes to be supportive. Is like, okay, girl, you know what? You got this. You go. You be you. I'm here if you need me. I love you. Have fun. And just let her go. And let her figure it out. And we'll So every back. husband should be like me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're lying. Yeah. Well, yes. Actually, you know what? You're a very supportive husband. I'm, I am going to say that. So... Look, it got recorded, so it's official now. <laughs> yeah, it's you on are the tape. very supportive. You let me do what I need to do, and even though there's times where I don't tell you that I, you're frustrating the shit out of me, <laughs> I just kind of like, oh, I'm just gonna sit on it. But for the most part, it's like if I need to figure something out, you know that if I come to you and have a question, you're gonna answer the question. If I want to know why does it work that way or how does it work that way or, hey, let's go out into the garage and show me exactly what you're talking about on a thingy in the engine <laughs> yeah. and you can show it to me. And I'm like, OK, that feels better instead of you sitting there, excuse me, um, you sitting there lecturing me. OK, this is you need to know your bike and you need to know how to change the oil and you need to know this. I'm like, no, I fucking don't. I can yeah. take that into the dealership and have them do that. <laughs> they get paid for that. Um, I'm trying to support my economy. So the support wise, um, find people who are like minded, find Mm -hmm. people that, um, you know, I love you. I love my husband. Let me put it that way. I love him. But there are times where I need to talk to another woman. Yeah, totally. (laughs) Because he's he's talking like a man and I need him to shut up. (laughs) I need another (laughs) woman to sit there and go, I know it sucks. I hear you. Um, And sometimes you just need to hear it and you need to vent. And so I think finding the right person about that uh, because, you know, riding with, with somebody, with other people in a group or a couple or whatever can be frustrating Mm -hmm. because it's who's leading and who's tailing. And when you're leading, I have to match speed to you, but you have cruise control and even if I do put cruise control, I'm never going to match your speed. So I'm constantly up and down and up and down yeah. <laughs> and it's frustrating. And then, but then if I lead, then it's like, you know, I'm not going fast enough or maybe I'm going too fast or what is he doing? Or, you know, it's just frustrating sometimes since it's like, oh God, can you just like, just ride, <laughs> just yeah. leave me alone ride. So finding the right kind of support, having people um, teach you um, in the right way. Oh my God, go to an empty parking lot, put some cones out, weave cones, <laughs> you know, practice leaning over and do it by yourself. Um, don't have somebody there. I mean, you can have, like, I would have you come in case I drop the bike, you can help me pick it up. Um, although I'm perfectly capable of picking up yeah. my own bike. <laughs> I mean, if, if someone's going to go out there and if you're going to practice yeah. and let's, that's what this is, it's, pa- it's practice. Yeah. Um, and if you're going to be by yourself, Record it. Yeah. You have a phone. It has a video recorder. <laughs> I think Use everyone it. has a selfie stick or some sort of yeah. stand. Just figure out a way that you can record it mm-hmm. and maybe reach out to some of your more skilled writing friends and say, hey, here's my practice session. Do you mind taking a look and giving me some pointers? Yeah. Something like that. And nowadays, Hell, Google Drive, you have a, you get like 15 gigs for free. You can upload a 20-minute yeah, video or yeah. an hour-long video up there and not have to spend any money or, for that. you know, get with your girlfriends yeah. on that ride uh, or, or friends and just say, I want you to see what I'm doing because I can't figure out why I'm doing it wrong. And for like, I feel like for m- most everybody, but I think women more, it's we need to figure it out um so that way we can take care of ourselves and we can take care of others yeah and um because i feel like that's more our nature yeah and when i was in the navy we had a term um with the teams work the problem yeah yeah 
And I feel too many people would rather just explain the solution mm -hmm. without going into the detail of how they worked the problem itself. Because usually, and it's, a, it's an old adage, right? The devil's in the details. Yeah. And when you're working a problem, you need to be able to understand every aspect, every yeah. step you're taking. Yeah. So I, I definitely see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And I mean, even, I, again, I can go on with examples, but I mean, there are times where I have told someone, this is what you're doing. This is what you need to do. And and they're sitting there saying to me, but I am doing that. And I'm like, well, no, you're not. <laughs> you're obviously not doing that. And it gets really frustrated because I'm trying to explain and try to help you, but you're not hearing that I'm trying to help you. You hear that I'm just telling you what to do. Yeah. And I feel like if you can look at someone's face and go, yeah, they've tuned me out <laughs> or they're just mad. You know what? That's okay. Let me take a step away and you go figure it out. I'm here if you need me. And, and see, you've gotten so used to me with that because you know your cue to leave is usually when something's flying past your head. You know, if I've thrown something or a tool you've or You've never pissed thrown off, anything at me. I don't throw it at you, but I do throw it. Yeah, you do throw um, things, which is stupid. Okay, so let's, um, <laughs> let's move into my favorite interview questions. And I call these... Oh, wait, I want to say one more thing. Oh. Can I just say one more thing? Yes. I'm sorry. I do want to like also point out too that I think the biggest difference between men and women when they're writing is especially if you have children um, a lot of women won't ride because somebody's got to stay behind and look after the kids you know it's unfortunate but accidents happen and if mommy and daddy are riding together and mommy and daddy go down and mommy and daddy die who's taking care of the kids and I feel like a lot of women worry about that god parents it's what they're there for <laughs> So that's another thing. If you're trying to get your wife to ride and you have children and she wants to ride, but she's hesitant about it, kind of keep that in the back of your head. Yeah. You know, that well, maybe she's hesitant because we have children and if we die, what's going to happen to them? And she doesn't want to take that risk. So yeah. just to, something, to that one point, last thing to think about. And if, if, if she is questioning or he... Sure. If if he's questioning if I should ride or not because of what what happened with the kids, you need to rethink who the godparents are. <laughs> I'm well, serious. No, you don't want to. You don't want to leave. You don't want to abandon your children. You want to make sure that they're going right, to be taken right. care of. So a lot of that. This it's for this reason. The, yeah. The knowing, major caretaker. We'll just go with that. Whoever yeah. the guy or the girl or two well, guys, two girls. I don't care. <laughs> but whoever the caretaker of the children is, sometimes they have it in the back of their head that. Yeah. I have to be careful. Um, I, I just, knowing that you and I are the godparents of so many fucking kids, yeah. your family and my family is not allowed to ride, which what? is funny because my sister wants to talk to you about uh, picking up a new, picking out a new bike. Oh, Lord. She wants to ride. I'm so happy for her. I mean, that could be fun. Yeah. But here, okay, here's a perfect example. In my brain, I just flat out thought, this was the first thing that came to my head was, when you said that she wanted to ride, she was a small child. Yeah. And I, that was what came to my head. And that's kind of what I mean is a lot of women do that. It's like, I have a small child. Should I actually risk getting injured? Sure. But at the same time, there's the other mentality yeah. of, it's I, have a, I have a small daughter. Yeah, you want to be I the want, inspiration. I want her to know that... If you want to be empowered, you go out and do it yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I love that. It's it's a it's a hard decision. It I is. Feel. Hey, sweetheart. Okay, so let's go back to the anti yes, shade yes, tree yes. questions. Yes, yes, yes. If money was not a concern, <laughs> what motorcycle would you own? I would bring back my 2009 Street Bob from the dead. <laughs> That's what I would do. I love that bike. I did. I did a bun burner on it. Yeah, you did your 1,000 on 1, there. 1,000 on my bun burner, saddle sore. Um, the first one. I did that on it. I did all kinds of crazy shit on that bike. I loved that bike. It was so comfortable. But, I mean, I guess looking at it, though, it's like we do longer rides now. How do you downgrade? I know. Well, it's kind of one of those things where... I would still get it, though. You would have your around town bike or maybe like your hill country bike. Yeah. 
And then I, you have your touring bike. Yeah. I, I have a serious like thought in my head that if you were to ever get a street bop that fit like that again, I'd probably ride that more than Edgers. <laughs> <laughs> I probably would. That's funny. I know. I love that. Because you did hear what I said was probably the perfect starter bike. I know. Was the Street Bob. Yes. It's a great bike. I cannot stress that enough. And the fact that now it's on a soft tail frame makes it even better. See, I don't even know. I need to go sit on it again. Just ask Hank for a test ride. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. But I really want to see what difference it is. Yeah. Because it was, it was just perfect. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, so bringing back Bob from the dead. Bringing back Bob from the dead. Uh, what is one piece of gear you will never leave home without? So, because I can't pick just one, <laughs> because it just doesn't, I tried. Mm-hmm. Um, I am the kind of person that will always wear a helmet. There's not much of an exception to that. Um, I, I To what if worst case scenario situation type person. So I will always wear a helmet and I will always wear gloves. I I just cannot wear, if I'm riding without gloves, I feel like my hands are naked. Hmm. <laughs> I feel like I can't feel the bike as best as I, or as, as good as I could, but it has to be the right kind of gloves. Yeah. Because the thick gloves, I can't feel the bike at all. And there are times where it's like dead of winter and I'm literally wearing those, those mesh, <laughs> gloves because they fit perfect and they're Mm -hmm. exactly what I want and my hands are freezing but I don't care because that's what I have to wear so helmet and gloves Uh, so the gloves part for me I'm the same way and I'm very particular about my gloves I hate full fingered gloves (laughs) because again I don't have the that textile or the tactile feel as I do when I'm barehanded but at Mm -hmm. the same time I don't want to be barehanded, so I I yeah. run my fingerless gloves. See now, and I could never do that. I could uh, never wear yeah. fingerless. And for the heat issue, uh-huh. now yes, that I have up. the heated grips, oh, I, I've talked so much shit about those, know, and now that I've nice. tried them, oh, can't <laughs> go back. I know that's okay. the hard part. But anyway, so yeah, I love your your response here. So I'm going to need you to explain. explain. <laughs> What is your favorite <laughs> riding location or somewhere you would love to ride? So, I do not have enough experience to say what one place is versus another because I haven't really been too many places, to be honest. Um, I've been a few, but, and so I can't say, well, oh my God, I would love to go ride in Japan or ride in, you know, Costa Rica or whatever, because I don't know anything about it. So I watched this show, <laughs> it's Ride with Norman Reedus, and I love this show so very much. And not only do I love him anyways, but the, he has um, guests on and stuff, and then they go to different places. I mean, he just recently we were watching, or I was watching, um, he was in Japan and he was in... Um, Argentina, maybe? Oh, gosh. That's terrible. I can't remember. But anyways, he was in South America. And these places that they go, and it's just gorgeous. It's beautiful. And it's experiencing the culture and the world. And I love that. I would love to just be like an extra, (laughs) just to ride in the back. That's all I want to do. I don't need to mess with Norman. He can do his own thing. That's fine. Him and his guests, y'all can do whatever you want. I just want to tag along because these places are amazing. And that's kind of what I would love to do. I think eventually, you know, when I'm old and crotchety and we're retired (laughs) and I have a trike, (laughs) Because at that point, I will. Um, I would love to go around the world and just experience weird places and end up in really cool riding situations. And I just love it. I do have to say, though, that show cracks me up a little bit because um, because they'll say, well, we're only we're riding 100 kilometers which to me doesn't feel very far. 60 miles. Yeah, 60 and some change. But I, I think that's a Texas thing because, again, you know, our speed limits at some places are 80 because it takes eight hours to freaking well, get across yeah, you, Texas. You have to have a passport to leave the state. Jesus. Um, yeah, it takes forever. You can do an iron butt in the state of Texas <laughs> very easily. Yeah. So, um, so anyways, so whenever I hear that length, I just laugh about it. I'm like, oh, really? It's going to take you an hour to get there. <laughs> Big deal. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's so hard. But um, but see, I think 
that show is actually not for motorcycle riders. I, I don't I don't think well I mean they do go on motorcycles and they do have different bikes and they do talk about bike stuff it is a good show no no so I don't have any issues with the show yeah but I think the the demographic that they're actually going for I don't know it seems very motorcycle friendly to me I just when I see it I see how they're riding and I just I pick it apart way too much oh yeah 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 and it's like me watching a wedding movie exactly <laughs> i'm gonna pick it apart like that doesn't happen i get That's it not i how get it. well okay yes they obviously have people that scout the area yeah. that go ahead yes you have to understand that there's a lot of behind the scenes but if you just take it on face value they're riding at some really beautiful places yeah. can't beat their locations they're um meeting locals they're um experiencing you know they're in japan and they're eating sushi and they're doing all of the things that you do um not just touristy things right and i think that's what i love so much i would love to do just go around the world ride motorcycles take pictures um experience life i think especially right now since I, we're all stuck inside yeah, <laughs> i have heard that you can do a very nice tour of Europe in 30 days. Mm -hmm. I wonder where you heard that. <laughs> you keep saying that. I keep on thinking a soft you're a liar. Tail. Yeah, you're a liar. On you a know. soft tail. You don't know. Let's, uh, let's put that to the test. We should do it.